Okay, new recording for a new day. Um, so the previous recording I had been inking or practicing how to ink. And um, this is basically a continuation of that, but not the same sketch. I made another sketch altogether because I wanted to practice. Uh, I mean, I wanted to continue practice when I'm also not recording and understand what I'm what I'm doing wrong or how to improve myself, basically. So, like, last time I was using, like, just this one single brush, which is, like, really cool. Like, it gives you a nice finish altogether. But I couldn't get, like, clean lines, or you could say sharper lines, uh, what a very fine micron pen or, a, like, a, you know, a thin brush tip would give you. So I started experimenting and I said, okay, why not I make another ink pen, like an inking material pen, kind of brush pen or something digitally that replicates that. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of them out there. Um, like, uh, I know Clip Studio Paint has like a default brush. I think it's called G Pen or something, which, um, which gives you the same results basically. So I wanted like something that gives you a more thinner line, but it still gives you like the same feeling that it would give you on paper. So I like so I decided like I'll experiment and I'll make another brush and see how it works out, which is actually fun. And then the other than that is like this brush, which is more like what if I took ink and then you know like I'm mixing water into the ink so like how it's going to give you that that kind of finish and then finally the copic marker kind of feeling to the last brush so basically i was like experimenting and trying to figure out what brushes i can make which is part of the process you could use one brush and get away with it which i did last time but sometimes you just want like different results so i wanted to experiment and see where i can get a, how far i can get with this so that's basically what i'm I've been up to um and I was like okay yeah let's you know let's do that and come up with a new possible idea to make like a new I mean like change your workflow in inking or something like that so yeah I'm definitely satisfied with what this brush is kind of doing and I was like oh yeah okay this is pretty cool after many hours of uh, experimenting, it's kind of giving me good results. And yeah, I was just like, I need to use this and kind of talk about this in my next video kind of thing. So yeah, there you go. Like, you know, um, it's still the same process as far as inking is concerned. Um, but there was, this, there was something I learned while I was doing all this was you don't ink just to make lines, you kind of ink values. So the blacks, the grays and everything, it's going to, it's, it's going to, it's going to dictate how much value you want to give to the ink. Um, a lot of my inspiration comes from like uh, comic book inkers. Um, if not comic book inkers, then like really amazing, um, you know, manga, mangaka inkers and all those kind of people who've been, who've been inking like decades and decades, as far as I can tell. So I was just looking at all that work, you know, like going on Google or like, I don't know, whatever browser you people use. Um, I actually use internet. I mean, I use edge. It's like, it's just the default browser, but like you could use yeah, whatever other browser you guys are using but like you know that and then going to pinterest and just finding out like all other possible you know like artists like from famous to people maybe not everyone is aware of kind of thing you know so like i was just going through all that and i was like yeah okay i'll i'll try to i'll try to like I don't want to exactly per se copy, but like understand how they use the, those techniques. Um, the technique is more important than just copying them. Uh, if I copy the, if I copy, I mean, 
I could make a good piece of art by copying them, but I'll only be able to do how much they can do or they've done in that art piece. Um, I will not be able to think and actually improve on it. So I was just like, okay, no, I don't want to do that. Definitely not that. And so that's why I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I should, maybe I should like learn, understand like how those techniques work and, you know, learn how to ink better. So like, you know, giving it, giving it like the necessary effects and everything painting in the values and and all that stuff so yeah that's that's basically what i've been um you know thinking about all this while and practicing when i was not like recording or anything um um when i when i initially started i was like oh yeah maybe i should do like super clean lines and all that shit but like then i realized nah, it's not the clean lines that matter really you know uh it's more about um how well you can how well you can uh translate your piece uh so that the person who's what who's like gonna look at your artwork can understand what's going on in the piece in terms of values and whatever else you want to put in it so i was like yeah okay i'll do that i'll just do that and um yeah i've been like kind of figuring out and practicing that there's no way you'll get good in one day or like overnight or anything, but like, you know, it's, it's something worth a try and it's just fun to do it. So I was like, yeah, let's choose to do that. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. The, uh, the other thing was like, I was trying to figure out whether should I like actually, uh, talk in this video or should I just like do a mute, mute, you know, like no mic kind of thing. Then I was like, I know, you know, might as well just talk about it. Maybe it'll be a long video, maybe it'll be a short video, I don't know. Maybe I'll take breaks during this video, I have no idea. Like, you know, I've just started, so I have no clue what I'm gonna do. And how I'm gonna go about it, like, how much time I've got. Um, it is a weekday and an afternoon for me when I'm recording this, but like, um, um, I'm pretty much just... Like, I've pretty much booked the entire time for just this, just this work. Um, I mean, it is kind of work, but like, at the same time, I'm like, I'm just having fun. So, like, I don't see it as work work all the time, you know. I'm just like, yeah, this is fun, so I'm just going to do it. Just try to create, like, this kind of thing. And like, I'll kind of try to use all the brushes I've created or like I've borrowed or whatever else like basically I borrow brushes like I download brushes from online and then I'm like oh okay this one's pretty cool some of them I just keep them as is but like um, a lot of them I kind of like start tweaking with the settings on Photoshop or like if I um like other than Photoshop I do use I do use Clip Studio from time to time like if I feel like it um I definitely like the interface what clip studio's got and krita is another really amazing software so like it's like sometimes i'm using krita sometimes i'm using clip studio sometimes i'm using photoshop um i'm just like yeah i'll, I'll just use whatever i feel like using at that point um i'm like okay like what kind of brushes can i use like you know what what can create interesting um shapes and all that stuff it, it it doesn't mean i'm brush dependent or something like that i can use whatever i want but it's more like i just want to have fun using brushes to come up with cool textures and stuff like that so like you know i'll just do that and just have fun doing that and then i'll figure out like oh okay this one works this one doesn't at least not for this one this part anyways and all that stuff so See that one? Those eyes are definitely not aligned, <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I actually don't want the eyes aligned. Um, I've deliberately kind of tilted the head and made it like asymmetrical in this in this specific sketch because I just want I just wanted that. I didn't want a perfect. I didn't. I did not want a perfect face. 
and I was just having fun doing this. And I was like, oh yeah, what if I just tilt his head a bit? Um, that's how the sketch was born. And then like now I'm like trying to figure out like, oh, how's his hair, you know, pull back and parting and all that stuff. Like, so yeah, I was just like, I'm just doing like whatever I feel like doing kind of thing. So yeah, that's what I said. Like it's a job, but like at the same time I'm just having a lot of fun. So why not? Um, yeah, and it's just the rest is like just inking. Uh, let's see this. Okay, um, definitely not a good year, bad year. I make mistakes. Everyone does. It's, it is. It is how it is. Um. If you if you start making perfect drawings in the world, then I don't think it, it's gonna be fun drawing. You know, you want some you want some level of like funny silly stuff, you know, in drawings, and it just makes it fun. It's definitely bigger than the other one. So yeah, this is basically what I'm doing. Um, and just coming up with what I can do, how I can do this. Uh, maybe I'll use the other one, other brush. Just want to make like these markings. And I've zoomed in a lot. I don't really need to zoom in, but like I'm, I don't normally zoom in so much. But yeah, uh, you could do. Now I'm using the the older brush that I was using in the previous video. I was just like, ah, yeah, this this part for the hair, I definitely don't need like a pin line brush. I can I can use like the more rudimentary one. I just want the I just want the effect of like this hair is being this person to like kind of pull back the hair, kind of thing. So I just want to do that. I could draw the I could use the sharper brush on the on the edges of the hair where I can create like a stronger line value and whatever. Like give it weight, give the line a weight kind of thing, you know. But yeah, it's faster to use this brush on the hair, so it's just I don't know, I'm just like I'll do this one. Gives you a nice you see that would give you a very nice uh, inking pattern. Um this is basically what I'm looking for. Like um, this this feels like hair, right? It's pulled back hair with like a uh, light incident on it and then there are like certain strands of hair that's giving that's giving a shine kind of thing so yeah you want to do that and then this part is darker if like if i make this part darker then it feels like he's a young guy he's a young guy who is um doing who's like who's not graying out or something so yeah you could do this And then it's faster to draw this way, actually. Otherwise, if I use a thin brush, then I'm going to be like drawing a lot of lines, man. So, yeah, you kind of have to like figure out which brush you're using where as well. That's, that's, part, of, that's part of the process. And more often than not, I, I definitely make a lot of mistakes on this. Um, but yeah, I think, I guess eventually, like, the more you practice, the more you'll gain control on your work, and you'll kind of get an understanding, like, oh, this is, this is what I can use here, and this is how I can make things more efficient, or rather than, you know, speed, you, like, focusing on efficiency, and, like, how to get, like, the same results, uh, with le lesser number of strokes and all that stuff, so, like, yeah. It's like, I don't know, I see inking and this kind of digital line art shading stuff all the same as painting. And painting as all the same as this stuff, you know? I see it as like, I don't, I just see it like as tools and it's probably using a different medium, but like I don't see them as like separate entities altogether. 
giving you like a really good effect. So, I'm just trying to get that effect. That's it. That's literally what I'm doing for the entire process of making this hair. Like, that's literally what I want from. Um, you got this. Uh, I can leave the hair the way it is because normally uh, you don't really get a sharp um, finish around your hair because you always have hair strands which will be like moving around because of you know whatever if it's a windy place or what and all that so you you normally have diffused um, a diffused border if I was to create a border around this character's head or whatever it is right so yeah it would just be that and then just darken the areas which i want to like ink actually i use this brush for the darker just darken the areas which you want to like give that stronger finish so you notice like i'm using more than one brush and i'm like completely comfortable using that um it's really handy to do this so like this is the best part about digital digital um lab all your brushes like have settings and you can just like immediately pick it up and use it um traditionally uh, i probably have to like you know dip it to ink, dip it in ink and then decide how much water i need to add to it and all that stuff so uh yeah, this is, this is like really fun. Like, it just makes work so easy. Um, yeah. Pretty much done this, man. My god, the eyes are bad. <laughs> the eyes are definitely bad. Um, it's because the eyes are not aligned straight. Uh, when I say not aligned, not only are they not symmetrical, they are actually different sizes. Um, so... You know, I love to, like, when I say size, I mean the length between this, the length of the, the length of the one on the left is a little longer than the length of the one on the right, and I can clearly see it. Like, if you spend enough time drawing, you kind of, you you'll be able to easily pick it up. You know, don't have to worry about them. And then this eyelash and eyebrows, that thick. Um, and even if they are they should be like kind of aligned in terms of like you know edge to edge not like when i say aligned as in like like how do i explain it okay even if you have a tilted head like okay so first i'll show you with a straight head and then I'll show you with a tilted head. Okay. So even if you have a tilted head, so in a straight head, your eyes are gonna be aligned like this. Right? And uh in a tilted head, your eyes are kind of still aligned, despite it having a tilt. Here we go. You see that? It's still aligned, which is that's just how things work so that was the mistake that i was doing like they weren't aligned so it was just not looking good you know and now it's, it's, it's comparatively better i'm just gonna leave it at that because it was just like inking and sketching and like i'm not really really creating a masterpiece here so it's completely fine um you could do a lot of corrections on it <laughs> I mean, um, if I wanted to show a masterpiece, uh, let me see, let me go to my artwork real quick. Um, I'll probably have some masterpiece in my finished paintings. Uh, uh -uh. Uh -uh. This one is good. I could show this one. This is a full blown. Here. This is. This is finished paintings, basically. You know, using color and everything. Oh, this is fully painted. You know, like, 
it's got that whole graphic, uh, colorful finish to it kind of thing, and this is like fully painted. And if I want to do it like with like photo bashing and stuff, uh, which is this one here, this is photo bashing, dude. So, <laughs> so this is like you're using like the character is fully painted. Yes, this character is fully painted. Um, then it was originally an image of a place. I just, you know, clicked the image. Uh, I color graded a little bit just to get that mood set up. And I've done very rough painting on this side, so please forgive me. But other than that, um, just adding a little more texture on the, using the texture brush, like some scratches and all on the floor, which were like not really visible or present. And then following that, like, I was like, okay, I want to make the character and, and the lighting as well. Like, you know, the lighting is not, it doesn't bloom this way. So I was like, okay, I need to make it bloom a bit. So did that edit. And then like I said, okay, I need to make this character add a little more atmosphere at the back so that the character pops out, did that. And then the character is like completely drawn and painted, like, you know, just painted, painted. So did that, you know, painted the whole thing. Um, and I was like, okay, yeah, okay, what do I want to do? Like, add the shadows to it. And then I was like, okay, yeah, what if I make a, like, a white outline around it, like it's a sticker piece or something like that. So just, yeah, just did that. Last. So yeah, this, this is another way you can paint things, you know? Like, you know, you can paint over your own photographs and stuff like that. So this is like one more process. And I do this, you know, when I'm like super inspired to paint over some environment and something like that. I'll, I'll just do this kind of shit. But like, yeah, lately I've been more on the... I want to learn how to get better at inking. Mangaka arc. Let's go. Like, kind of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you could do a lot of things. You know. At the end of the day, uh, being an artist is all about um, creating cool stuff. You know, some people will say, oh yeah, you can express yourself, and yes, that's also true. I don't deny it. And um, at the same time, you can also, like, do... I don't know, you can make other things. But you can make... You can also draw for other people, I guess. And, um, you know, bring their ideas to, like, a reality in a way so you could do that all that is part and process of being an artist i guess so you got this ink this part i want to i want to create like a what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to create like a shading of sorts like because it's his teeth over there and I just want to I don't want to go like super dark on it I'm going to go a little bit of this here and this right it's two inwards we got this we got this yeah i think we're done there okay yeah it should be good it should be good. Um, yeah finally got it man not the best of my work but i'm okay with it because it's more about practice makes perfect and how you make mistakes and then learning from those mistakes and Trying to do something really amazing on out of it. Remember, folks, you don't have to make a perfect art. You don't have to make a perfect art piece. You can do whatever you want and spend time learning how to get better. Um, you are kind of the most critical thinker of your own art piece. You will always hate your work. It's it's a given. I'm not even gonna lie about it. And because of that, you need to stop like thinking about oh shit, I drew I drew a bad art piece and it's not worth putting up online and stuff like that. Nah, just just you know, just put it up online. There's no such thing as 
Um, there's no such thing as like, oh, it's, it's really bad kind of thing. Put it up online. Maybe someone's going to troll you. Someone's going to roast you. I don't know, man. Maybe some, no one's going to roast you. And then they'll be like, oh my God, this guy's work is really amazing. Yeah. It could be that as well. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Because you're drawing it. And you're drawing it for yourself. Which is like the most important thing ever. Unless you're drawing it for a client and the client has hired you. That's a whole other story. But yeah, we will talk about that maybe on another video. Or maybe I mean just talk about it like in the later part of this video. But I really want to learn how to make more... How to get better as an inker. Not gonna lie. The way I'm doing it right now... I'm probably not doing it right. Uh, I mean the technique, not the... Not the drawing itself. The technique. Like... The goal is how you can make this... feel like it's a bunch of values in black and white that's the goal whenever you're drawing or inking so if you can figure that out and you actually get good at it you will be drawing like really cool stuff like basically that was just going to improve your rendering skills uh, as far as your fundamentals are concerned, that's all about like learning anatomy, learning how to make environments and all that stuff. That's that's still the same. There are a lot of videos on the internet for that kind of stuff. Like a way shit ton of videos. Compared to what it used to be back in 2010. Believe me. A lot more videos, man. I'm an old dude, so... Back in my day, when the internet was a baby. Or something like that, I don't know. When we used to go to arcade machines that didn't exist in my hometown. I'm doing a very really bad job as an old man. Voice. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. Um... Alright, so I, I've kind of done this kind of rendering and then I'm like just gonna take the other one, other brush. Um, because this one kind of feathers out or fade out, fades out when I'm like pulling the, you know, the lines kind of thing. It's just faster to render on this one compared to the other. The other one's good for like just outlining things. You can say that. You can say that again. Do that. It's called... It's called having a beauty. What did I do? It's called having a beauty, man. It's looking good. It's actually looking good. I wanted to give him a little more. This guy's aged man. He's a middle-aged man. Carrying drinks and serving his customers. I mean, I could draw a pretty guy, if I wanted to. <laughs> but I'll do that for another future video. But yeah, this is like, I think I'm gonna just have a series of videos about like, inking. Because I'm just in that, in that phase. I wanna ink. Uh, I am doing other work for customers and clients, which is like, which involves more painting stuff, so... I'm like, I'm not doing painting when, I, when I'm in my free time, y'all. I'll just do inking work. Like, learn how to make a manga or something like that. That would be freaking cool, dude. But being a full-time mangaka is not a joke. Um, I do know they have, like, really crazy work hours for themselves. Even if they're... Maybe they're not, like, working for a publishing company or something but like they have like crazy work hours anyways 
lot of people will be like, is that really the way you should live in your life? And I'm like, I leave that open for debate and I'm not going to question anybody about their choices. There you go. So like, one of a version of Bruce Wayne. But not Bruce Wayne. But yeah, okay. So the the biggest question would be is whether the ink is the inking stuff that I'm doing, it's kind of holding out um if there's no sketch behind it. That's what matters. Which it does. So if it's if your work is able to do this, then you're pretty much solid. Like at least for beginner beginner level um uh, inker. But if you're a pro inker, then this is not solid. I'll tell you. I'll tell you that right now. Probably even pro inkers watching this video, and they'll be like, "I'm getting anxiety, my dude. I don't want to see this shit." <laughs> or maybe I'll get commended for it. I don't know. Oh, that would be nice. I wouldn't do. Pro inker comes in. Oh, look at this slide. It's doing such a good job. Maybe we should give him work. Yes, sir, please. I'm searching for work, sir. I'm always looking for work. An absolute troll. Um, that's basically what I'm doing here. Jesus, man, what's the time? Bro, 31 minutes already? Oh, man, I want to finish this. I don't think I'll finish it today. Uh, it's okay. I got the whole evening as well, so I'll, I'll try to I'll try to draw as much as possible on this. Forgive me, folks. I'm not a I'm not a long hour streamer, or a YouTuber, or a artist altogether. I always take breaks. You know, I've got a good back. Um, I exercise regularly, and. Um, well, I'm not like super, super like fit and muscular and all that. I'll probably get there at some point in my life. But yeah, yeah, I exercise regularly. I'm not fat or I'm not. Um... Well, fat is not the word. I would say like I'm not obese, like unhealthy obese. I'm not in that. I'm not even chunk. <laughs> I'm actually OK, I guess. Not even like skinny, just in the right place that I can eat what I want, drink what I want, not worry about it, and work out nicely, exercise, and then also, um, what you call it? Like, I don't have a number, like, you know, perfect. Perfect vision. I don't wear glasses. I never needed them. Hopefully I don't need them in the future either. So, yeah. It's all because I take breaks. Which, for some reason, people don't like. And then I'll be like, oh, but you have to give me a break, sir. I need to have my tea. Or my coffee, or whatever the heck I want. Maybe a juice or something, or a milkshake, I don't know. Whatever I'm in the mood for. Or a sandwich. Well, that's not a beverage, but yeah. Um, and then they'll be like, How dare you take a break? And then I'll be like, How dare I? <laughs> be like a very cheeky person. Escapes for a break. People wonder where am I, where have I disappeared to, and then I show up, and then they're like, what? And I'm like, what? But you were not here. I said, who said that? I saw you. I'm like, hey, your eyes must be deceiving you. Yes, you're wearing specs, I'm not. I don't have a number, my eyes are perfect. And they'll be like, how dare you? I'll be like, how dare I? <laughs> Yeah, I don't mean to offend anyone though. Whoever's watching this on YouTube, please don't be offended. I'm telling you right now. That's me. I mean it. If you do feel offended, do comment 
do leave a comment because I love people actually leaving comments and I barely get any comments which is very sad so do leave a comment help this child please um no I shouldn't have done that um, if I was doing this traditionally I had to use white ink which is like thank god I don't have to do that on digital and then you do I'm just like extra rendering this is basically over rendering the thing you don't have to do it sometimes you can sometimes you don't but most of the time you don't so you don't need to over render anything just just render the way you see fit and just make good Good decisions in your line work. That's it, man. That's all you need. That's all you need, man. And then you got this. I have to zoom in for the fine line stuff. For the finish. You must zoom in, sir. But I don't want to zoom in. But you must. But no, I don't want to zoom in. I'm doing a horrible accent, so please forgive me. <laughs> yeah. I do all sorts of shenanigans and I, I flag every single possible thing on YouTube and people are just going to be so mad at me for that. Or maybe not. <laughs> I don't know how the world works. I just do, I just draw for a living. I am a sad, sad child that way. Just draws for a living and plays fighting games in his free time. Nothing else. What kind of fighting games do you play? Well, lately I'm playing... Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and I am nowhere close to the region, nor in the ranks of the Wazzler, so I'm safe. And I'm not that good, really, I'm not that good, I'm a noob. There's no way someone like him is going to play against me. Well, the outcomes will be the same, though. We will always be losing in that matter. So there's no way that's happening, but I love the game. MVC2 is a really good game. Absolutely fun. And yeah, it's an interesting game altogether. Okay, here's another cool thing about drawing stuff like this, okay? You want to create the folds and the lines in a way that it's kind of directing the folds of the piece, of the cloth piece, or the skin, or whatever the heck you're drawing. Okay, so for say for example, I've got this this fold here, right, which is of the shirt that this dude's wearing. Um, instead of like just drawing a line, which you can, and it's completely fine to do. Um, I could do this to showcase that the lines are kind of directing the fold. And then like, just extend it this way. And then take two points here. You see that? So much better. So much better. And then you can darken the areas where you know the shadow is going to be stronger. And just give it a look. It, it's kind of giving it a little line weight to the piece and all that stuff. So, you know, you can do that. Um, or Eesh. Okay, uh, you could do that, but other than that, I think we are good. You could do this kind of feathering to the piece, which no one's gonna notice. It's like cheating. <laughs> you could do this, which will give it like a oh, look at that, it's like a very nice understanding to how that material is working. Yeah. And then 
you can do the same thing here. Okay, so this is the edge where his shirt kind of ends. And then this is another part. So I'll just give this. Give him more. Darkness, my old friend. And this. And this is still part of the shirt, so I'll come here. I'm gonna do this to that. This is where I'm using the lines instead of like doing the feather thing, you know. It's 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 like the conscious decision what do you want to use where and it's gonna help, trust me. So you got this, you got the line set up, I'm kind of making this area darker because shadows and line weights will actually make the image pop, right? Um, here could be the lines, oh my god, please excuse me, while I'm mute. I'm getting distra disturbed, distracted, or summoned while I'm doing my drawing today. That's the reason why I was like very hesitant whether I want to do a long hour session or not. But it's the magic of recording things, you know? You can take a break and then come back and continue recording and no one will know you took a break. The beauty, the magic of video editing, folks. So that's basically, I could do that. I could totally do that. That's completely fine. But I wanted to do, 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 do a single video. Do, 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 do. I wanted to do. Don't go sir. I wanted to do a single video. That's literally what I, I wanted. Just one video. And don't do any editing. A raw video uploaded on YouTube because I'm too lazy to actually do any editing for myself. And then some editor will come and be like, oh, I can do it for you. Are you interested, sir? I'd be like, why yes? Why not? Sounds like a plan. I don't know how YouTube monetizes things. I have no idea about all this stuff. I'm simply recording these things because I just feel like doing it. I do not make money out of YouTube. I do not make any... Um, I do not make money out of any sponsorships, no ads, no nothing. It's just a freaking video about me drawing and probably just talking shenanigans. Absolutely nothing else. And this shirt is coming out like a god's uh, thing. Oh, that's actually come out pretty well. Um, I could I could add more shadow and depth to that, but I'll do that later. Oh, I could do it right now. Can I do it right now? I am interested. Can you do it right now? That is a certainly a good question, sir. Okay, if I wanted to do it right now, like genuinely I wanted to do it right now, I could use the Copic marker brush that I created for myself and just like paint it in the direction of where the shadows start and then push it towards the light kind of thing. Too, too dark, sir. Too dark. And this is why I'm not using the public marker brush all the time. It becomes difficult to actually... I could use screen tones, but I don't know how to use screen tones. That's something I still have to learn, man. I'm not joking. Screen tones is not as easy as it looks. I really don't know how to do it. Gotta learn those things. 
Mm, you know, that's say, folks, I may be a painter, but I'm I'm a noob when it comes to making comics and um I don't know when it comes to making comics and probably inking altogether. I'm not really that good. But I did win an award for a short comic once. Moment and the highlight of my life. It was fun. And then after that, nothing happened. <laughs> no, I mean, yes. Right, so that is the thing. We got this, folks. Look at this. I'm making... I'm making a... Leave. Of the dude's... Shirt. Wait, where's the hand? Uh... Uh... I'm making... I can do this. I can cheat here. Wait, hold on. Let me... Cheat. Cheat. Cheating. You do this. See that? Cheating. I have no idea what I just did. Just made lines. No. <laughs> it was planned. Okay. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, this is the hand here. Right. Very mighty big hand you're making here. This is the hand here. Right. Um, what I'm trying to do is... I'm trying to create the folds of this part, which all go down to the sleeve. I mean, sorry, which goes down and connects back towards the the start of the sleeve. Kind of, you know, something like that. And um, what happens is, um, it gives you the impression that it's folds but it really isn't i'm just like kind of cheating my way and getting away with it kind of thing you know it's not really really perfect accurate folds it's just just looks like folds and that's what i'm doing i'm like look man I just need to make the folds look like folds, and they're not really folds. So, I should be good. And then you got the hand. No idea why I'm doing this. That is not how hands look, sir. Learn to draw hands again. Go. Okay. I'll do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Society of Earth. I have failed you in drawing hands. I shall go and punish myself now. I'll learn how to draw hands again. My god, the hand is, uh, is awful. It's horror, I tell you. Horror. It's okay. It's okay, chat. There's no chat. This is a video recording, so I don't know why I'm saying it's okay, chat. How could you do this to me? Is this like a juice? I think I'll make beer. <laughs> Alcohol's not meant for minors. Remember that, folks. Remember. All right, so here is a cool opportunity I can do, which I really want to do. I can create a separation between the shirt and the glass that he's holding, which is one of the best things you want to do. So do this, do this. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do 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 do 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 do
That guy goes fast, man. It doesn't matter, man. You can do it fast. Fast. Okay. You got this. And then you got like maybe one or two over here. Maybe one, two over here. One, two lines over here. This is just aesthetic choices. But the goal is to make it feel like there is a layer of separation between the two spaces. Voila! It looks like shit. <laughs> no. Okay. I'll make the beer, boys. Make the beer. It's got froth and everything. You're using the wrong glass for beer, sir. I don't care. Actually, no, I do care. I just do care. I'm just using the wrong glass. But I do care. Okay. Okay. If I want to drink beer, I want the right glass. I don't want the wrong glass. So, yes, I do care. <laughs> Alright. So you got this. I don't know what the hell what the hell this is. Um honestly I don't need to do that. I could just do something like this. This is why you should learn this feathering techniques and all that, you know, weird shit, because you can create lines in a much more dynamic way, which will be very interesting to, you know, create things. Alright, so that is done. Got this part. Um, take the other brush again. Right, you got this part, and then you go. Oh, here I am definitely using the Copic marker brush. No, let's go. I don't know if it's a Copic marker or like an ink brush with a lot of water. To dissolve that damn thing but it does the job that is just what i wanted and that is precisely what the doctor has advised me for you got this and a little bit over here a little bit over here a little bit over here all this yeah it looks well sir it looks pretty good i do say so myself Art and then you got. I want to create a little depth. Someone's outside, yeah. It's all right. You got this. I don't want to use this brush again. And I'll cheat. I'll use the eraser tool and create bubbles. I mean, if you use like a spatter brush or something, it actually creates bubbles, but I'm too lazy for anything to do. Alright, there's another hand here. So the nail. Nail. Right, glass comes like this, it's probably holding the glass, so this will be where his first thumb is. Would you move in in tonight? Let's turn around and meet me. I'm sorry, I can't sing life and songs like that, so. I'm not gonna say But yeah, yeah roughly his hand is gonna be something like this. And we got this part, which is gonna be the remainder of the glass. And we got this.
Does the thumb actually stretch that way? Oh, what do you know it does? Um... Yeah. They should give you enough information what the fingers are doing. And then you got uh drawing something chaotic is easier than drawing something which has a lot of precision. Because like even if you draw chaotic it'll still look pretty. So it just it just becomes easier. So you go to this. Um, pew pew. The sleeve. Focus on the lines, man. And then... Someone told me... Oh, uh, there's a lot of clickety-clackety because of my mechanical keyboard, so I'll probably change that in the future videos. I just remembered I was supposed to do that, but I forgot. So I will do that in the future videos. Yeah, look at this, man. It looks so good. So you're supposed to take your time. No point rushing. No point trying to do this fast. Just take your time in making these, because... The more time you take, the better it'll come out. But sir, the world doesn't work that way. Everyone tells you you gotta do it fast. Yeah, well... Life. Can't help it, my dudes. Shit happens. Shit happens. Are you okay? Okay. Well, this there is a second glass that is coming into the fold. Um, we got this, and then we got some of this. Honestly, I'm probably rendering this, this part wrong, because I don't have enough references. I was looking for something, but I couldn't find it. I'm probably drawing it wrong, my dudes. Or at least that part of it. Um. But yeah. Just ink it. Ink it and get better. Ink it. And get better. This is like rounded. I'm not drawing straight lines, I'm slightly curving them. 
because it's not straight, the hands aren't straight. So if I can go on this way down. And I'm kind of sleepy as well at the same time today. All this. I was like, I don't want this kind of thing for the shadows, man. Oh, does take time. I'll eventually get there. Don't worry. Ooh. Man, I'm yawning way too much. It's not a good thing. You don't yawn during work. If you do, then your work is boring. And my work apparently is not supposed to be boring. Why am I yawning, man? What the hell is going on here? So yeah, just keep changing on brushes. You get the results that you need. Have got another hand here. This is sleeve, I guess. Maybe. Some person is messaging me. Um, a good way to actually. Uh, learn different inking techniques definitely watching people is um how do you put it like trying to reverse engineer what the artist did in the piece that in pursuit and trying to replicate that not the artwork but more like the shadings the values the techniques so that you can then understand it and impl implement it in your pieces in the future. So that's a good way of learning it, which is actually hard, I'm not going to learn, because most of the time people get them health focused on, um, yeah, I just want to copy this kind of thing, and that's not supposed to be the goal. So, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be focused, man, and not sleep. Hmm. Don't sleep on the job. Okay. Go this. Go this. Go this. Um, I do appreciate this brush. I'm happy I was able to make this.
So this part. Thinking can definitely get boring. Can't help yourself, man. It can definitely put you to boredom. Well, I think I'll record this in parts because I'm completely feeling it now. Yeah, like a lot of this has actually come out pretty well. Um, I don't know. I think I'm missing something on as far as the face is concerned. I'm kind of missing a certain level of rendering. Um, that's solely because I'm not really good at it, and I'm trying to figure out what I can do about it. Sometimes you don't need a lot of rendering on the face, and it still it still looks very good. Sometimes you do need a lot of rendering on the face, and then, then only then it looks really good. So you kind of have to decide what, what exactly the rendering it is that you want, or you don't want it at all, you know? And based on that, you kind of figure out what do you want to make on that. Otherwise, you're like kind of stuck on dead. I don't know, man. I'm just like trying to think to. I'm still looking at references and trying to figure out whether I want that or not. So, like, yeah, that's basically what I'm doing. Like, I'm looking at references, drawing at the same time, and then like trying to figure out what is the best possible um, route I want to take in terms of like painting and rendering and all that stuff, you know. I do this, which is like basically rendering out the details on the This part. Well, that's probably over rendering this. Yeah, I think that's probably over rendering. We need this basically. Yeah, there you go. This is kind of okay. Um, how is the shadow coming? It's I don't know. Honestly, that is where I made a mistake. But if I'm do if I do make like shadows only from like one side, then I kind of have to stick to that. This should give you like this should give you like most of the <clears throat> most of the detail that you want here. And then you got this part. No, okay. I 
I'm trying to make it so that the division between the glass and the hands is like actually like a division what will happen in real life. Not like, oh, there's some line there, so it tells you where the division is kind of thing. I'm not really trying to achieve that. I'm trying to achieve a little bit of a believability in the piece, which will give or direct the piece in the way I want it to feel. This hand will come here. Oh, no, same comes to glass. Do this. But yeah, do take breaks because when you're thinking so much while you're making the artwork, you're definitely going to fry your brain out. And then you start making mistakes. So you don't want to do that. You really don't want to do that. So take breaks, come back later, continue drawing. That's the best way to actually get good. I kind of draw everything, so it's like I've reached the point where I'm like, oh, I'm comfortable drawing everything. And I know how to do it kind of thing. But together, like, I don't want to fry my brains, man. Yeah, it's pretty much it's pretty much coming out good. Most of it actually. And then take this. Okay. Half of your hand. And we have this. Like this one. Like I'm drawing the lines in the direction of the fold, which kind of helps sell the the shape of the object easier because then you're like oh okay if it's if it's rounded then it makes sense that you know the shadows are directed that way like your brain tricks you into like convince you into like oh yeah this is how it's done so you kind of do that way Uh, 
Close part. Let's see how it's looking. Did I do that too dark? Okay, okay. Get something to break. Yeah, I'm not doing it darker. Go this and go this part. Then take this and then just slightly dab a little. Move it here. here. And we should have that. See? So that's basically inking. And it's not the best way, or it's probably not the best version gotta practice to be you actually become better so yeah it's just how it is done i'm gonna take a break and come back later but in the recording it's just gonna jump so yeah i'm just gonna do that stop recording man let's do this we're gonna get back to what we were doing my dudes all right take my long break and now i have returned to what I was supposed to be doing. So, where I left off was, I was basically working on this. And I was like, oh yeah, well, I'm going to take a break. And my break went quite long. Uh, I'm not really going to give, give away how long that was. But yeah, it was pretty long, man. It was pretty long, and um, what I'm doing now is, I'm um, just returning, or you could say just continuing how to ink, but I have to warm up again. Um, so yeah, you can get a gist to like how long the break was. <laughs> was this hint, it wasn't a single day. We are in a different day, in a different timeline, you could say that, but anyways. So, yeah, just warming up again. So, if you're warming up on inking, or like warming up, just in general, with your drawings and stuff, um, take it slow, don't try to, don't try to like, draw fast. Just like, be like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna do it slowly in the start until my until like I'm like warmed up, my lines are not that stiff anymore, and all that stuff. So yeah, just take it slow, do it easy. It's like it's like switching back to the easy mode for your work, and then like and then then coming back and then be like, okay, now I can do it fast. So that kind of stuff, you know. So don't worry too much about it. And just keep growing, keep growing growing uh, this is this is the case where i'm just like trying to create like um a sense of um shadows and lights and stuff like that so i'll actually It's a belt, you know, it's, so it's going to be a little dark if you're assuming it's made of leather. There you go. Um, getting back to this one. Take this. This is 
at least some percentage. I draw the lines like you know these squiggly lines or like extra um lines just to give like a sense of detail like um giving an understanding to like there are wrinkles over there and all that stuff um that's pretty much the reason for drawing that otherwise i don't really need it so yeah and then i'm drawing this that's probably holding that is whatever this drink is so no way my hands are perfect um you want to get them better you have to practice uh, that's the only only way only way through it but like in my case i'm just deliberately making them kind of not perfect um the pro artist probably sees this who who does like a lot of mastery and stuff like that they're probably going to kick me for that but like yeah it's, it's okay i guess um how is it okay you're making a bad you're doing a bad job of i suppose you could say that but yes the goal is to come up with how much of a drawing you want to make regarding this matter And then you go this, and you go this part, which is just drawing the line surface. Okay. And I'm just taking this brush in. Just a little bit. Yeah, there you go, man. And like I wanna I wanna showcase that there the arm is there, like the hand is there for the back. So what I'm gonna do is like I'm gonna like create these lines like this to showcase like oh okay there's his hand is definitely slightly visible to the back of his to the back of this blocks or whatever you call it. So, yeah, that'll give you like an understanding, okay, it's it's a transparent material. And there's probably something we have that. Uh, it's not perfect, it's probably not even actually giving that vibe to it. What I can do is um, draw the lines for the like how the hand, uh, you know, kind of breaks down kind of thing. Just draw this. There you go. So now you're given an understanding like, oh, okay, there's a hand over there. You basically do that. And yeah, coming back to drawing the pants. Or the trousers whatever you may call it you know just make these like i did this i did this on the folds above as well you know, like you don't have to do it all the time sometimes it's okay to draw the straight lines or squiggly lines or whatever you want to do but sometimes you make those you make those um you make these kind of decisions it's it's a it's a personal call um, it doesn't have to be done this way, but you'll get, you'll get an understanding when you should be doing it and when you shouldn't based on what you're drawing. And it's like, you could say an artist 
intuition. Yeah, probably artist intuition. And yeah, you'll get there, man. That's basically how it works. I'm gonna draw these, I'll probably give it a little more um line rate. This lower half doesn't really need a lot of line weight. And it can, but I don't really need to. And then coming back to the side of the hand. It's probably his arm. It will be a very weird arm, to be honest, because... I mean, the whole concept of this drawing is weird, right? It's like, it's got six arms carrying drinks. Um, so yeah, it's okay to have it weird at that point. He's got these, his fingers probably trying to hold the... Uh... Wait, fingers do that? Or do I... <laughs> that would be the other question raised. Face like this. You have it. Get a little more break on that. Forgive my clackety keys, but I like my clackety keys. It's quite loud, actually, isn't it? Wait, I don't remember. Fingers like this. Why not? Yeah, correct me. It'll just be the palm on this side. I do keep it a little bit on the understanding that there is an anatomy at play, so it doesn't look alien completely at this matter. At this point, yeah. Humanoid, right? Person's humanoid. It's it's basically a human being with six arms. So you know, there has to be a little bit of grounded reality on this one. And you got this. I like all this. And then I'll use the other one. You can draw this part fast because you don't really need to put in a lot of detail. And you got this. There you go. Pretty much solves the problem, man. And I wanted to basically create um, um, right. Um, I'll take this one here. This is where this brush really comes in handy because you want to do these kind of line work. That's a personal choice of how that line work is coming. Did I press E? Oh, shit. Other line work is coming. So without the uh, without the sketch, the um, you know without the sketch in the back, just the inking part. How does it look? Does it look good enough or whatever? So yeah, this is pretty okay. Now there's one thing I actually have a screen tone brush, just which I downloaded from somewhere I don't remember where, but like I basically want hello what's up then why not oh there you go that was weird okay um i basically want to screen down this part so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to create another layer on this first 
and the screen tone and that. You can use screen tones, you don't need to use screen tones, it's completely up to you. Uh, in my specific case, I'm using them. Uh, just because I felt like using them. But they're not really doing a great job. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... Uh, actually going to adjust this a bit. Uh, create a masking layer. Use another brush. One of the older, other textured brushes there. Um, just like raise certain parts of it. The faded thing. Back. Right, and then the other thing I'm going to do is go back to my original um go back to my the copic marker one which i use a lot and just i should probably do that on a separate layer as well and Right, and this. there you go. That gives that sense of like, oh, okay, there's there's like some level of painting going on here. This is where like your layers come like really handy for digital work. It's just because you want to plan them out. And then decide, okay, this is what I want to do in my layers, kind of thing. But that's, this is the only time when those layers are coming in handy, otherwise you don't really need them. So yeah, this is one... One of the drawings. Um, it's okay, to be honest, it's not one of the... I'm still learning how to do this, so it's going to take me some time to actually get it. Um, plus, I'm not doing like a really good job in line breaks, honestly. Like, I can tell there are mistakes being made, at least in my own work here. And that's a good thing. That means you can do more. You can definitely do more. But yeah, you'll get the you'll get the hang of it as you keep practicing. Sometimes you gotta be a little bit um, bolder with your lines. Like, be confident that you can like you're making those lines, and you know just just go and make it. I guess. Like, you don't have to worry. Oh, what if it's too thick, or what if it's not straight, or what if it's it doesn't look that good? No, I think it's fine. Let's just do it. These lines are too thin, bro. I'm not even doing like full lines, just like front play like joints. Yeah, there you go. This this should this should do it. And then you've got this one here. This glass here. There you go. Um, a good way to practice all this stuff is also by referencing things. Um, so I I normally have like some Pinterest pages and all that stuff open. So I'm normally referencing. I'm still trying to reference stuff and like figure out, oh, how did this artist make, uh, you know, that page or that inking panel? How can I do that and all that stuff? So I'm often looking at that stuff. The, the, the current issue with the... G-Pen, um, 
you know, the, the GPEN style of uh, uh, brush that I made is, um, it's not giving the exact thickness value that I'm looking for. So I'll have to like experiment a bit more and then come up with some other possibilities of how I can make this interesting. Right, so yeah, that's a, that's also another thing I'll have to pay attention to and figure out how I can make that. But yeah, you can do a lot of that. Um, what else? You have to do the other one. I'll do. I'll start with the one in the top left, the raccoon, basically. Um, I'm just looking at some other examples on Pinterest. The cat can ink things. Maybe I'll come up with a better possibility of inking things on the next on the next part of this. The goal is to get a better, become a better inker, man. That's that's literally the goal in this in these uh, sketchbook practices how to be a better inker thin lines thick lines when are you making bold uh, gestures when are you like being very um finesse about things and all that stuff you know all of it all of it matters Um, let's see. I have a lot of references, but I want a little more energy in my work. That's actually one of the goals I've been trying to do. Like, you're making the drawing and you're trying to give it more energy. Main, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Okay, I forgot to do the ones on the top right. So let's do these first. Uh, you notice now I'm much faster. Like my basically my hands are warmed up now. So I'm like, yeah, I can do it faster now. But when your hands are warmed up, you'll end up doing like much better job in like inking this stuff. It's always the case. I genuinely like this brush, but it's hopeless to make um, strong borders with that brush, and I'm not even gonna lie. So this, take this brush again. Giving it curves because it has to be, it has to be made that way. So, yeah, now my work is like, now I'll be much faster. One hand here, you got another. Another here and another here. Fingers are... Something like this. I mean, not perfect, but it's fine. Go like this. Hey, oh, look at that! Hooray! Okay, go like this. Um, yeah, I'll go this part. I think I'll just use this first. Place. Okay. 
but I'm gonna move all of this part here. There you go. Pretty fast. So this is what happens when you when you warm up. You get better. You get faster. I mean not in a not in a bad way. It is, it is like now you can do it like without worries. My hand is pretty much at this point my hand is pretty much um solid man. I don't know if they should use this brush or not. We'll see, we'll see. Got all these. One, two, three, what, and you go this part. This part. Shit. There you go. Hands down. Right, and I'm probably going to just use the same layer. Now, this is the where I'm like, I'm not using a different layer because I don't need it. Um, let's draw the hair, no? You gotta do what you gotta do. I think I'll use this brush. For this specific case, I think I'm using this brush only. I'm using this brush more. Uh, let me just erase this part. It gives this unfinished, uh, rough feeling, which I prefer in my artwork. And that's the reason why I sometimes often use this brush. It's like, it's like a pencil ink mixed together kind of thing, you know? There you go, this brush is being used in this matter. Then you got this part, you got this part. Just like shade it. The advantage that you can use this like a pencil as well as the ink brush is kind of cool. That's the beauty about having, that's the beauty about using digital. Traditionally, I would like, yeah, I would use multiple brushes. I mean, I am using it here as well, but like, you know, it's just, well. I like this rough finish that I can always do. Yeah. I am aware how it's gonna look as a finished piece. So now I can go over and then probably ink it a little bit. Just to give it a more dynamic Dynamic, uh, not dynamic, more cleaner uh, border. It's actually a better approach. We learned a new approach, folks. Cleaning lines after drawing. 101. So, the only reason why... Um, I'm having trouble with what I'm having trouble, uh, you know, when it comes to the line work. It's solely because I don't have enough brush control, one, and two, 
I'm still learning on this. So what happens is when you're still learning, you're still exploring and experimenting, you try to figure out which works and which doesn't work. And in this case, in this case, using this hard brush is working out for me more when I'm just when I'm just like cleaning up the borders, right? And maybe just adding a little bit of more, you know, dark, uh, darker tones on the value, right? Otherwise, it's not really useful for me. So I'll just stick to that. Keep the second the second brush as my main brush instead, right? And just go down that path. Just just make make it the way you feel is gonna work out for you. And then like I could use this bigger one, the Yeah, I, I I was gonna use this other one as well. And then so yeah, to use this one and then just add more you know like depth to the darker values you want to add wherever you want to add them. this brush here is more like a like you've put you've taken a you've taken a like a I don't know bristle brush and then you've just you know dipped it in and then blotched it kind of thing uh, but that's the kind of that's the kind of effect it gives I just use this a lot for this right. and it's like a dry brush basically so it doesn't have a lot of water There you go. If I finish that you are looking for. This is the effect I wanted in my inks, specifically speaking. A little bit of that dry brush effect and all that. Really makes the really makes the art stand out a lot, believe me. And you go, this is the eye. It's still, it's still, uh... And then you go, this part here. Right, and then you got this part here. Now I could use the brush here in the in this case. But I just want this effect. And yeah, he's got well, super happy raccoon that someone is serving him drinks. Yeah, there you go. This kind of value stuff that you make, trust me, very useful. See that? It looks really good. It causes the it causes the value work to look really good. So if you can do it that way, it's gonna like this is help a lot. Um, and I'm making this part here. Probably just make it, I'm take a bigger brush here in this part. Get a little bit. A little bit of intense. So yeah, I don't need to make more brush marks. There you go. I'm not gonna move that. Oh. 
this. So you notice I'm not using the um the solid ink brush that I was using, like the, the one that works like a micro pen. I'm not using that right now. Uh, because I just want this to be a little more on the depth of detail. So I'm like, okay, I'll just use this one for now, which is going to give me better results. So yeah, you, you, you kind of have to be comfortable that, you know, you, you want to change things on the fly. And you can come up with new ideas and new processes that way. So this will give you a better workflow on things. There you go. So practice this. So this is like all about practice. The more you practice this stuff, the better you'll get. So you have to just be willing to spend the time. <laughs> Just willing to spend the time with it. That's it. This thing here. The nose. Have control over how you're shading things. It's really important. It's this brush here. A little bit of the topic. To give it to give this tone a little grace. I need that grace over there. Yeah, it looks so good, bro. Grays over here as well. So it's like, yeah, it's pretty much giving you the output that you want. So yeah, do this, do this. Right, uh, take the original. Over this part, they look on So if I remove the inking in the sketch layer on the lower point, I get, I get a really good result over here now. Oh yeah, let's go. Okay. Um, got this, you got this. It's all about creating the gesture of the values of the inks and just going down that route and sketching it the way you want it uh that's basically the entire purpose of like how do you say it? This is the, that would be the way you would improve kind of thing like understand how you would ink something um and then how you would go about it and believe me, it helps looking at a lot of pro artists 
for that work. Let's take back brush. Let me do this. I could actually teach this in live streams, but I don't know, man, I'm too lazy. Maybe I could do it in the future. In the future, I have become a live streamer who draws. I mean, there are plenty of them out there. And I honestly support them. A lot of artists out there, like small artists, big artists, and they, they do live streams on Twitch or YouTube. And they're doing a pretty good job. They, they, they draw pretty well. They spend time learning how to draw like improve on their art and everything. I appreciate that, man. I really do. Got my respect for sure. Look at this. Look at this. I'm gonna draw a little bit of Cause this looks actually really cool you know when you come up with these kind of gestures it really pushes your drawing okay there you go draw some lines here this far And yeah, I'm gonna do this. Maybe, 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 just maybe. Doing that on purpose. And. A little bit of uh, shading over here. Yeah. Looks good, man. Okay. So we got this. We got this. We got this. Yeah, there you go. This should give you a really interesting effect. Bum 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 bum. Okay, go this. Uh, draw the lines in the direction where you think the fur is going to be, you know, flowing towards, and uh, do that way. This trust me that is important. And I'll take this uh, topic one. Use the eraser a little bit to shape the design. Give that feel. 
Give up. Gives you the perfect raccoon. And a little bit here, like dots. There you go. Gives you a more natural effect. That's basically what you want to do. Sometimes, oh, you're so hell bent on inking. You you will start to try to create these really thin and perfect lines, and then you'll realize that you just want to give it a natural effect. And then you'll be like, okay, fine, I'm not going to use the thin lines again. Not ever, but like more like you'll just go back to using something which gives you better results. Which is what you're after most of the time. There you go. There you go. I'll just make this. Oh no, I'll use this brush. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is... See that? That was what I was trying to achieve. I don't remember how many fingers the raccoon has. I think it's four. Damn, I've not done my research. Shame on me. I think it's four. I think it's five, or if I'm correct, or maybe four. Not quite sure. Well, I guess I'll get away with it for this one, man. If someone wants to criticize me, sure, go ahead. I'm not gonna stop you. Look at these beautiful fingers of the raccoon. There you go. Remember this this pen, you still have to use it. I'm not saying you completely abandon it. The one that gives you sharp lines. Still use it from so that you can create a like a separation of things. Never abandon things. Trust me. You never know when it will come happy to you. Alright. 
And you get really good results of what you want to make. I think I still overdo certain parts. Um, I probably will learn how to do. Will probably will learn how to control that part, or control how to get better in that. Um, you know, overdoing or overcommitting on certain rendering, which you think is not required when you like later on look at the work and then you like, wait. Why did I render that part? I don't really need to render so much. Right. So, I don't know, man. I don't know which, honestly, I do not know when I should render or like how much I should render certain things. So I guess that's something I'll have to like practice and keep learning and looking at other people's work and all and understand whether I really need to render that or not. It's all part and process of the workflow and getting a very clear understanding that you need to do it or you don't need to do it kind of thing. So I don't worry too much about it. Just just look at pro artists, understand what they're doing, understand their techniques, uh, learn how much you can from it and then try implementing and creating your own techniques through that. That should be a goal. And believe me, that will work. All the freaking time. Yeah. Look at this. Such a cute little thing. And it actually looks good. I'm, a, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with the, the rendering of a raccoon compared to the guy for some reason, and I think I'll, I think I found myself a nice workflow on this. When to use the sharp brushes, when to use the rendering brushes, all that stuff, yeah. There you go, you should do it. How much time have I used up? One hour? I think so. I don't know. I'll probably make a part three if it's gonna be this long. Because I think it was one hour yesterday and another one hour today uh, of recording this video. That means it's two hours of this video already. I don't want to make a four hour long video in one place. Part one was one hour and this is part two, which is the second part of part two, that means that's like, yeah, it's a long video, my dude. 10 hour video, let's go. In our video, if we will. I'll just use the copy brush on here on this part. Well, I don't know, I'll just use this one. brush. I call it the copy brush because it just feels that way. Not really the topic topic brush, but it gets out of fact.
There you go. Yeah, it's pretty much coming up, right? I think we'll stop it here. I'll stop this. I'll upload this part, make this as part two, and then I'll create a, record another video, which will be part three, and this that will be the continuation of thinking this. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna stop it here. I appreciate whoever watches this video. I'm a useless noob when it comes to video editing and stuff. I have to actually learn how to do that. My mic shit. I've still been experimenting with it. I think. The voice is better on this one. I'll have to check it out, but I'm going to upload it anyway and then complain about it. That's just how I am. Uh, but other than that, I think... Um, yeah, I think I'll just stop here. Thank you, whoever is watching this. Really appreciate it. It means a lot. I'm not really monetizing anything on this. Um, I'm just making videos for free and I'm like just documenting that stuff just for my personal things and things to remember and hopefully it helps other people along the way. Um, yeah, hopefully it just helps people along the way and they get to pick up some tips from what I do. That's it, yeah.